Hi everyone, it's Michelle here. Thank you so much for stopping by today. You know, I just so appreciate it when you stop by and spend time with me. I wanted to share with you today was some gardening I've been doing. I know a lot of you do gardening and are into gardening. I thought I'd share with you some of my herbs and what I grow. It's nothing elaborate. I don't have a huge big garden. I do have a garden around my property that's too much actually, but it's I don't actually plant in there. They're, they're flowering shrubs and flowering trees and they're things that just need trimming down that take care of themselves. I use pot and I do have a really lovely wooden planter box. It's almost waist height. In fact, I've got a spare one sitting down in the garage. The last one my son put together, so I probably have to hassle him a bit to put this one together. I'm absolutely useless when it comes to that flat pack stuff and putting together and these weren't easy actually. People are either really good at that or they're not and I'm, I'm not a flat pack person. I'm, I'm a shocker actually. I'm really terribly bad. I just put it all on the floor and I just sit there and stare at it and have another cup of tea and come back to it and stare at it again. And then I make minor attempts and realize I've put it upside down or this bit's wrong or I've put the wrong bit with the wrong bit and the wrong screw and there's, all, there's always screws. Have you ever seen this flower? Have you ever seen this plant? If you know what this plant is, you win the prize, you win this. <laughs> Joking, I couldn't send this. Um, this plant is called a cyclamen. I've been buying cyclamens for a very long time. They only flower in the winter months here. In colder climates, they might flower for a lot longer. But if you buy this plant, a cyclamen, they come in all pinks, purples, and whites as well. So all those shades, pinks, every shade of pink possible, purpley shades and whites. If you buy this plant, it flowers inside without any sunlight whatsoever. In fact, it doesn't even need direct light. You'll probably do better with direct light. It will flower for two months minimum, and you might get three months flowering out of this plant. I think it's the best bang for your buck. I think it's better than buying a bunch of flowers because it flowers for so long. <laughs> and when it stops flowering, if you cut it back and just leave it outside somewhere in a sheltered spot, the next season it'll all pop up again and the flowers will be there again. Cyclamen. I give these as gifts sometimes. Instead of buying someone a bunch of flowers, I have often bought a really lovely ceramic pot and put a cyclamen in it. You can put these in your bedroom where you see them every day. You can put them in your bathroom. It's like having cut flowers in your house every day. I love cyclamens and the colors are gorgeous. I'm out on my deck, it's raining today really raining, lots of drizzle. I've never done this before, see how I go. So this is parsley. I grow quite a lot of parsley because I use quite a lot of parsley. I put parsley in just about everything because I know I've got something green, something fresh and organic in what I've cooked. I sprinkle it over the top of all sorts of things. I always put it in my eggs when I scramble my eggs. I don't always repot anymore. I used to. I used to buy herbs and put them in special pots and big pots. I found they survive a lot better in the pots that they come in. So I try and buy decent sized pots. And when they're finished, if they're worth transplanting, I do that as well. This is sweet basil. I use a great deal of sweet basil. It's a fairly easy herb to grow, although I did live in another area where I could grow it a lot better. It doesn't like the humidity as much. I was living in a drier climate. This, you, you won't believe this pot, but this pot of basil, even two months ago, had no flowers on it whatsoever, none. How did I get it to look like this? I'll show you in a minute. It was even less than this. But you can see that this one is coming back. I don't know if you can see down here without me tipping out. See the little plants forming here? The little leaves coming back up here? When the basil's starting to die off, what you do is you cut it where there's a, um, what you call that? Where there's a joint, <laughs> not a joint. You cut it on an offshoot. Where there's an offshoot, can you see there where I've cut that? 
there's a little nodule there where there was an offshoot. So if you cut it on the offshoot, there's a really good chance it's going to spring back up and be a plant. It might not work, it doesn't work every time. So what I do when my plants are dying down, you can see it here on this one. Can you see here? I've cut it there on the offshoot. There was one shoot going here and one going. So I cut one off. You just clip one off, keep one and clip one off. Or if there's several, clip most of them off and keep a few of them. That's how I got that basil plant to come back from nothing. <laughs> I used to do it by seed because when they seed, I'd save the seeds and I'd replant them. It doesn't work here. For some reason, basil doesn't love the humidity in this area. But in a dry area, keep your basil seeds and replant those. Try that. When the flowers finish, that's the seed. The flowers become the seeds. Just stick them back in the ground. You might get lucky. I used to be able to grow basil so easily like that. As I said, it depends on the climate where you're living. I bought myself the other day at the nursery. I got a little bit naughty here. These are chrysanthemums, little baby chrysanthemums. And these are violas. So I've got my yellows or golds with purple. I've always adored violas. Violas really are just like, I think a mini pansy. I think they obviously belong to the pansy family, so I'm really fond of them. So down here, I have a tray of herbs. Now, this is a really great way I've found to grow herbs in these long trays that aren't too deep. In here is, a, I'm gonna say both ways, oregano or oregano. I think it's most co commonly called oregano, and I use that a lot in, obviously, with pasta and so forth. And the other herb in here is thyme, which I use when I'm cooking fish or in soups. I'm going to try and show you how it's cascaded here over the edge of the balcony. If you put oregano in a pot, it can make a hanging basket or a hanging pot. It can make a gorgeous cascading plant. It's very, very hardy to grow. Here I've got some bok choy. I just want to mention something about this. I've grown bok choy before, don't try and grow it in a confined space like I did this time. I'm going to have to transplant these out into my bigger planter box. A lot of plants just don't like to be confined and this one's not doing too well because that's what I did. I tried to put too many in one spot. There's a little bit of bok choy there, it won't flourish in there, I'll have to transplant it. And there's my basil that was just a few sticks. That was only wooded sticks a few weeks ago and I've chopped it back at the join. Remember the joins here, the little nodules or whatever you call them, these joins here. I chopped it back here at the joins and it's all springing back up again for me. Just show you my rosemary. Rosemary's gotta be the hardiest herb to grow. I've never ever had trouble growing rosemary. And the scent is absolutely divine. I think most of us love the smell of rosemary. It has a really cute, elegant little mauve flower on it as well. Now you hear these flowers. These are called dianthus. Dianthus, in my opinion, are the most hardy flower you can grow. If you want a, a flower that anybody can grow, and I mean anybody, try dianthus. If you're not sure what they look like or what they are, ask somebody at the nursery to show you dianthus and they spread. They um, spread quite a lot. I mean, this is in a confined spot and they come in a variety of pinks, purples and whites. I find dianthus probably the hardiest flower. Well, it's the hardiest flower I've ever grown. Yes, this is my downstairs deck. This, I'll just show you my little potted plant here. This has got petunias in it. Petunias are also really easy to grow and you get longevity out of them. The colours are gorgeous. Lighting. I made this. It's macrame. I can make macrame hangings and macrame. Well, I can do macrame. And I made this quite some time ago. I got back into it. On, this is quite a while ago now. And I kept this one. I gave a lot away and sold a lot, but I kept this one because of the beautiful ceramic beading in it. I love these beads, these turquoise ceramic beads. Aren't they gorgeous? It's my chairs and my cushions. It's all very blue and white down here. So what have I got in here? I've got lots of parsley. And this is where I transplanted the bok choy 
here and as you can see it's doing a lot better in a bigger space. This here is chives. I always grow chives because I love them in soup, I love them with eggs and they're just really a handy herb, they're hardy as well. You can get garlic chives and I grow those sometimes as well. There's a little bit of basil there and you can see the basil here. Now that's starting to flower and there the seeds will form from those flowers. Keep those seeds and see if you can get your basil to grow from seed. I used to be able to. Here, where they're going yellow, when the flowers finish and the seeds form, they go a yellowy cream color. Keep those, stick them in the ground. You might get lucky like I used to be able to. When most of your plants go to seed and flower, there, there's, there's Dianthus again, the one that I told you is the hardiest flower of all that I've grown in flower beds. There's the Dianthus and there's the seeds on them. They're going to seed here. Do the same with your marigolds. When your marigolds are finished flowering and turned to seed, just take the seeds and dig them back in. Not deeply, that I haven't been able to for some time. Don't know why, don't know the answer to that. Don't know whether it's the climate here or something's happened with the flowers. Some people are saying they're making plants now with sterile seeds. If anybody knows more about that, leave comments for me. And anything to do with gardening at all, leave comments. If you do garden and what flowers do you grow? What herbs do you grow? What do you find easy? What do you find hard? I don't know the botanical name of this plant. I think it's called a money tree. I think it is. I think it's supposed to be good luck and money. I stuck it in here because it broke off from a much bigger one that I had and it completely snapped off. And I was told that if you just stick it in the ground, it'll all come back up again and you'll get another plant. So I thought, I'll give that a try. I've never tried that before. This is how you learn from gardening, just trial and error. You, you can't do anything too wrong. They're your plants, just have fun. I'm not an avid gardener and I really do not have a green thumb. But I've learned a few things over the years just by asking people that or figuring things out myself, giving things a go. I've had a planter box before and you're like me, you have, haven't got the best back in the world and you're no longer able to get down in the ground digging on your hands and knees. It's hard work actually. Um, think about a planter box, they're pretty economical these days. I bought this online, I think um, eBay. It was only like $60, $70. Oh, that that flowering bush that you can see in the background, the purple one with the gorgeous bright purple flowers, that's called Tipicina. Tipicina flowers in, um, actually usually flowers twice a year that. It's a big bush and it gets a little bit out of control. Oh, there's my um, lime. Look at them all on the ground. I couldn't keep up. I can't climb up tall enough to get all my limes. Can you see them all up the top? It's just too dangerous for me to be getting up that high. And I collect as many as I can and give them away, but oh, it's a bit of work for me. Two mandarin trees over there. They have very small mandarins on them. I've been eating them lately. Hey guys, I'm a bit wind blown from being out there. It's really not a very nice day today. It's um, lots of drizzle, lots of wind. Thank you so much for watching my video today. You know I always appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed down below, subscribe button, red button, hit that one. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye now.